Good morning and welcome back to GP Outdoors. The sky is angry this morning, my friends. I was expecting sunshine and clear blue skies, but it appears the weather network was just a little bit off again this morning. This is episode two in the trilogy Splitter Wars 2020, as I prepare for the big day. I get my carryall and my tractor ready and prepared for the morning's events. My neighbor guy is back from his big trip in the city, and we're going to head back out into his forest and drop that big maple I identified in the last video. As you can see, despite the lack of sunshine, the warm temperatures are having their expected effect on the ground. The ground is thawing, the ice and snow is slowly turning to slush, and it's making for a big messy trip out to Guy's back forest. As we continue through spring, and the ground continues to thaw, and we get the frost out, we're gonna see a lot of mud, as we do every year at this time. I'm starting to realize that it might be a good thing that the sun wasn't shining bright and hot today as I traverse the trails in the forest. I make sure to park the tractor far away from the tree, just in case. Always better to be safe than sorry. And I size up the tree one more time. It's a big maple. In fact, it's probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest tree I've ever tried to fell but I never try to drop a tree without either neighbor guy or neighbor Bob close by to give me guidance and to oversee the operation. I get prepared while we're waiting for guy to come down through the forest. Definitely going to be needing some wedges today. And I want to make sure the saw is warmed up and ready to go. I realized the other day that the saw was starting to run a little bit rough, and then I realized that I'd forgotten to change the baffle over on the intake on the carburetor. So I did that this morning. I'm very fortunate to have Guy's kindness and experience along to teach me how to fell trees properly and safely. As is often the case, I always make sure that I try to clear out any area around the tree I'm going to drop to make sure I have a clear escape path once the tree starts to fall. Today I'm going to learn something new though. It's a maple and it's springtime. So the sap is running and I'm about to get my first experience at trying to cut a maple down that's full of water and sap running through the bark. Guy overlooks the situation, sizes up the tree, and as is often the case, we have a little debate as to where we think it's gonna fall. I tend to always think it's gonna fall somewhere else, but for some reason, Guy's always right. As I begin my front cut, I'm starting to be faced with a couple of new experiences. One, my little saw, although doing the best it can, has small dogs or spikes. And because of the circumference of the tree, I can't get the spikes into the bark to bite. So I find myself having to leverage the saw at the same time I'm trying to cut because I can't rest it into the bark and allow it to pivot naturally. I start to get confused by all the smoke coming off the end of my bar. So I stop in mid-cut and as often as the case I look over at Guy and I point to the smoke. He smiles and he just calls out, it's the sap, don't worry about it. So I get back to cutting the tree. My 251C is doing a great job of cutting through the bark, but I take my time with this big behemoth. Luckily I had my wedges with me, and I take a few minutes just to shore up the back cut in the event that the tree changes its mind. And then I continue through step by step, taking my back cut just a little bit closer to the hinge. Although we disagreed on where the tree would fall, 
Guy walked out in front of the tree across the path and took the heel of his boot and drew a big line in the snowbank and told me that was exactly where the tree would fall. I thought for sure it was going to fall a little further north of that, but as is often the case, guy was right on the money, tree fell right down on top of his boot mark. Based on my rough calculations, I have 10 good rounds for this competition, and I'm going to need probably close to another 30, depending on the size. My still is doing an excellent job of cutting through this large trunk tree. It's 16 inches, so it's certainly no small feat for my little saw. But I quickly learned that I have to keep pulling the saw back to continue to allow the chips to clear the channel because I think they're getting gummed up by the sap. If you watch the channel, you'll know that Guy and neighbor Bob and I always have a little bit of a joke between us, between the husky and the still. You'll notice how easily my still sliced through that 16 inch timber. <laughs> no comment on the husky. The Splitter Wars Challenge should be an interesting and I'm looking forward to getting it done. It should be coming soon within the next couple of weeks. For those of you that aren't aware, there are eight different YouTube channels participating with eight different types or ways of splitting wood. Myself, Roger from Tractor Tech, Hometown Acres, Our Green Acres, Back 40 Firewood, Willie's World, Joe from Steel to Wood, and our friend Tractor Man 44. I have to ensure in preparation for the contest that I have one full face board of wood or 42.6 cubic feet of wood to split and my rounds have to be a minimum of 12 inches in diameter. I'm certainly going to satisfy that requirement currently but as we get further up the trunk of this tree, I'm not sure we're going to be able to maintain that minimum 12 inch, which means depending on how much wood we calculate, I may have to go after more wood after today.
I'm fortunate to this point that the tree is levered over top of a hump in the forest, which allows this end of the tree to sit up at least a few inches off of the ground, making it easier to cut. However, we're fast approaching ground level. Guy recognizes it's time to relieve the pressure, and so he goes up ahead, and he takes down a couple of the limbs at the crotch. Good job. Thanks, Guy. Unfortunately, these guys don't make the 12-inch cut, but they will make for good firewood, just like the rest of it. However, we did get a fair amount of good sized blocks, but given their size and their weight, and especially that they're wet at this time of year, I decided to take my time and get them back to the woodshed in three different trips. It's a beautiful day today. I'm in no rush. Yep, <laughs> they're heavy. This is our second trip back. Now time to pick up the last few blocks and wrap it up for the day. <laughs> oh, Guy. Guy has a great sense of humor. He's always got a good one-liner here and there. He throws them in just at the right time. <laughs> Makes working in the forest a whole lot more fun. I think that's a wrap. I'm actually happy now that the sun didn't come out today because the warmth of the day all on its own has turned these trails to slush and to mud. The last round of the day, now it's time to take an accounting. I've decided to count and measure each round to determine how many cubic feet I have. I have exactly 30 rounds, but it appears I'm gonna be four rounds short. But that's not a problem. I should be able to reap those four rounds out of the log pile close by. And then I'll be ready for splitter wars. After a day of lifting those rounds, I think we've earned ourselves a little bit of liquid painkiller. Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button. And if you wanna know when I'm posting more videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful week with your families. Be safe and be well. And we'll see you again in the next one. Cheers.